Hey guys, my name is Matthew, and this is my review and analysis of Moon Over Manifest by Claire Vanderpool. Here we go. Moon Over Manifest is a Newbery Award-winning book that's set in Kansas during two different timelines, 1917 and 18 type timeline, and then 1936-ish. The bulk of the story follows Abilene, who's been sent away to the town of Manifest, away from her father. She's there for what she thinks is going to be the summer, and she ends up spending that summer really learning about who her father is and what he did in this town as he grew up. Through what she learns about her father, she also learns a lot about herself. As I talk about this book, first I'm going to be giving my review. The first section of this will be mostly spoiler-free, and then afterwards I'll give an analysis that will have uh, a few spoilers in it. So as far as observations about this book, I'm going to start by listing them roughly from my favorite things about the book, and towards the end of the, of the list, I'll give some of my least favorite things about the book. Firstly, I really enjoyed reading Moon Over Manifest. I think the prose was really well written. It was flowery enough, and it fit the time period pretty well. I enjoyed reading it, and it felt like it really brought me back in time to those time periods. Uh, with the writing style, it was, it was really easy to kind of get into it. Related, I really loved the colorful language. It described the town of Manifest, and it reminded me of the time that I spent in small town Kansas. Claire Vanderpil did a great job of painting a picture of small town Kansas that felt really real. It was vivid and beautiful, and I really enjoyed it. I also think that Claire Vanderpool did a great job of arranging educational elements throughout the book in a way that didn't interfere with the story. It was very obvious we weren't reading an educational textbook or anything like that, but it takes place in the historical past, which was helpful for making a young reader maybe understand more about World War I or about the KKK or some other historical elements from that time period. Another thing educationally that lined up there is it was really helpful in teaching about poverty and some of the effects of the Great Depression. It's easy for us to put ourselves in the shoes of the protagonist, Abilene, and kind of understand her her feelings and mindset surrounding things like food and depravity and the, the kind of broken downness of the town as, as we see it through her eyes. I loved the themes of friendship and diversity in this book. Those are themes that I really appreciate and I love. I think especially in children's book, those are great things to throw in there. I think she did a great job with those things. Now, here are some of the things that I didn't like as much about this book. And I'll be honest when I say because it's a Newbery Award winner, I'm going to go a little harsher on it than I would had it not been. Uh, I think I hold Newbery Award winning books to a little bit higher standard, and to be honest, in some ways this book did not meet the standard I was expecting. To start with, for a book as short as it is and with kind of the audience it was intended, there were just too many characters. Some of the characters were in two different timelines, going by different names. It made it confusing, and honestly, we didn't get to know any of the characters as well as I would have liked, including the main protagonist. She was interesting, and she had a great story, and I would have loved to have gotten to know her better. But similar to the other characters in the story, there just wasn't enough time to really get to know her on a deep level. I will also say the story drags quite a bit. As a more mature reader, I was able to get through it and I felt like it was fine for me, but I could definitely see myself as a younger Matthew reading the story and really struggling. I think there are some sections that the story just didn't quite have the pacing it needed to keep me involved. And I, and I even as an older reader, did struggle with it, as a children's book, I think it would have been really tough to, to kind of keep with it. Lastly, I felt like there was quite a bit of whiplash in the book. I mentioned before, it takes place on over two different timelines. There's the, the timeline of 1917 and 18, and then we shoot forward to Abilene in, in the 1930s. And that was confusing enough, and I think that could have been done well. But we also have uh, different characters speaking. We have newspaper clippings. There are four different fonts that they used, I think four different fonts they used to try and characterize who was talking and what time period we were in and that helped a bit but it was still very jarring to switch from character to character switch to a newspaper switch to like advertisements to it was very hard to keep up with it all and i think that was part of what made the book actually drag like i mentioned before so overall i do recommend this book i think it was a, a good book it was really really well written though not quite to the standard that i would consider a newbury award winner i think this book is great for um, maybe a high school class trying to dissect some themes of this time period, if this is some a time period you're studying. Um, it may be good for adult readers who are interested in this time period, who um, like some of these, these elements, 
But actually, I, I would struggle to recommend this for uh, most children or even middle grade readers. I think this would be a tough read for many of them. The next kind of section of the video, I will be briefly talking through an analysis of the book. In this section, there will be some spoilers. So if you don't know the end or if you're planning on reading this book but haven't gotten to it yet, I would suggest you not watch this part. The two main things I'm going to be talking about in this analysis are some of the themes that I really enjoyed and that I think that were discussed well. And I'll be talking about some of the symbolism as well. Some of these things may be helpful if you're studying this time period or this book, uh, but I don't think you'll probably be able to write a paper solely based off this information. You'll need additional research and to think through some of these things yourself. My absolute favorite theme in this book actually comes from the dual timeline that I just finished criticizing. I actually love the way that Claire Vanderpool used two different timelines. She echoed the timeline from the 1917 and 18 timeline to the 1930s timeline. And we see characters who overlap. We see uh, experiences that overlap, and it invites us to recognize that things in the past affect things that come after them. So we see that, you know, 1917 affects 1936, for instance, in the book. The thing that I think I really like about this theme is it invites us, the readers, to think about how that affects us now. For instance, we can think about things in the past, for instance, the 1936 timeline, or even things that come after that, 1945 or the 1990s or whatever, and think about how they affect us today. In the book, Abilene has to make decisions about her life based on what she learned about the past with her father. And I think that the author is really encouraging us to think about those things for ourselves. What things have happened in the past that affect now that I have to make decisions about? I really enjoy that theme and I appreciated the way that those echoes through time help us to understand more about who we are now. Another theme that she discusses uh, at length and is throughout the book and I really appreciate as well is the theme of home or maybe belonging. The scene that I really love about this is when Abilene is first in the treehouse and she invites her friends up and she's kind of snarky with them and initially rejects them. It's really great how they're able to connect and belong even though they weren't initially getting along. And we see that throughout the book that people are reaching out and inviting Abilene to belong even when she doesn't want to belong at all. Eventually she gives in and she thinks of, of the town as home, but I really think that um, th th those themes are interesting. How do we reject people? How do we bring people in? And what does it look like to belong in a home environment? The last theme that I think Claire Vanderpool did really well is the, se the theme of self-blame. Both Abilene and her father Jinx struggle with this idea of self-blame. Events that are out of their control, they blame themselves for, and it affects the way that they live their life, and it affects the decisions that they make. This is a great one for self-reflection. Think about ways that you have actually blamed yourself for events that were totally outside of your control. And think of ways that maybe you're doing that and it's affecting your life in a negative way. Self-blame makes sense when it is actually yourself. There are things you can fix or change. That's great. Let's do those. But if the things you can't control... I love the way that she discusses this theme and, and the way that we can overcome some of those issues. I've also picked three, three elements of symbolism that Claire Vanderpool focused on in Moon Over Manifest that we're gonna talk about. The first one is a compass, which I really love because there's so much symbolism in a compass already. A compass helps you to find yourself and to find your direction, know where true north is. What I love is Aveline starts off right at the beginning of the book letting us know her compass is broken. It doesn't work. It's such a great metaphor for her because she doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know about her father. There's so much that she's just unaware of. Very early in the book, she goes to Mrs. Sadie and says, I'm looking for my father. And that's because the compass represents a lot of things. It represents her father, but it also represents how lost they are. I think there's a lot that you can talk about with the compass in different ways that, that the symbolism works itself out throughout the book. So I invite you to just think about that one a little bit more. The next symbol that I want you to think about is anything that was in the cigar box that Abilene found under the floorboards. In particular, I think the skeleton keys are a huge one. Unlocking the history of her father and her family using these keys, that symbolism is ripe there. And that's one that you could spend a lot of time thinking and processing over. Lastly, I want to invite you to think about Miss Sadie's leg. I love the injury and the symbolism that's wrapped up in that as well. She gets that injury when she's out finding the compass, but the compass is actually the one that she gave to Ned to begin with, the way it passed through so many hands. 
her injury represents so many things in her life, including her own past hurts and the misfortunes that have surrounded the compass and her family. I invite you to also think about the injury that is on Miss Sadie's leg and think about how that may pertain to other elements of the story, including the injury that Abilene sustained as well. This has been my review and analysis of Moon Over Manifest by Claire Vanderpool. If you've enjoyed this content, feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, stay safe out there.